Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to our first bout of the evening. This is the first quarterfinal in the Pro King of Sparta featherweight division. It's a boxing bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, out of the red corner, Milton Rourke. Fight fans, welcome to Sparta 98, the King of Sparta featherweight tournament. I am J.R. Gordon, joined by Todd Romero and UFC fighter Drew Dober. We have an exciting card for you tonight. For those not familiar with how the tournament works, the quarterfinals, we have the fighters face off in boxing. After their boxing fight, whomever advances, then goes into the ring for some kickboxing. That's the semifinals. Then the winners of the semifinals will face off in the cage in MMA fights. So that's right, three fights, one night, King of Sparta winner goes home the champion and $10,000 richer. Todd? Well, listen, it's one of those things where what you'd like to do is come out and, and get a first round knockout. That's not always what works. And Drew, you know, all these guys have a gas tank, but depending on where they're from, obviously Yusuf Salal's in this tournament. He comes from here. Altitude's gonna be a little bit of an advantage for him. We'll see what it does for the rest of the fighters. Yeah, now all uh, eight guys showed up on weight, ready to go. Um, and we had a full uh, stacked eight man tournament. And uh, man, I'm, I'm super excited to see, you know, who makes it to the end. That's a bunch of professionals. We appreciate that. Out of the blue corner, Yusef Zalal. Well, Yusuf's a fighter we're very familiar with, a Factory X fighter trained by Mark Montoya. Uh, listen, he's trying to do what Dustin Jacoby did. Dustin Jacoby was out of the show. He came in, he won the, the heavyweight King of Sparta. He did it at 210 pounds, ended up getting a contract. You know, I think Yusuf's using this opportunity to, to see the big show again. And uh, man, this is just such a great tournament to, to Put your name out there. Yeah, Yusuf's looked outstanding his last two fights that we've called in JR. He just has all the tools, but now we'll see what it's like when he can only use boxing. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see him have to select his weapons a little bit more, but I expect big things out of him. He's a professional, he's done all this before, and we're checking out the tail of the tape here. Milton Rogue, 30 years old as a senior versus Yusuf at 26. Milton Rogue 5'7", Yusuf a little taller at 5'10". We'll assume he has a reach advantage as well. You can see their records there on your screen and Milton Rogue lists himself as orthodox versus Yusuf who says he's a freestyle fighter. This is our quarterfinals, three rounds, three minutes each. We talked uh, big on Yusuf, but this Milton Rogue has a boxing experience and he's gonna come in with that plan. All right, we'll take it up to Stewie. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first bout of the evening, the quarterfinal matchup in the Pro King of Sparta featherweight division. This is a boxing bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the King of Beers Budweiser red corner. He is an orthodox style fighter, standing five foot seven inches tall. He weighed in at 146 pounds with DCO MMA from Durango, Mexico, Milton Rowe. <laughs> Fighting out of the Estrella Helico Blue Corner. He's a freestyle fighter setting five foot 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 145.2 pounds with Factory X from Casablanca, Morocco, Yusuf. The Moroccan Devil, Zala! Got a cool nickname Every too. Oscar Martinez. <laughs> Gentlemen, professional boxing. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch them up, back to your corners please. All right, this is what should be interesting with Zalal starting off with the boxing feature. Listen, guys from Mexico and, and, and you know, being Mexican myself, <laughs> listen, they're tough fighters. That's just the way it is. Here we go, it's punchy punchy time. King of Sparta. I mean, coming from an MMA background, I think this boxing is gonna be the hardest round for Yusuf. Just going to those rules, the boxing rules. And you can see a little bit early on Yusuf stands. Oh, nice hook. Yusuf stands pretty wide for a boxer. Yeah, both fighters applying the hook early. So Drew in this one is an MMA fighter and you're in this boxing 
you know, obviously he's trained for this, but you've got to really be careful on what you're doing, but yet not give rounds away. Right, right. But, you know, like a lot of people don't uh, recognize is the range is different. The way you fight in boxing is, is very different than MMA rules. And so, I mean, to me, it's both combat sports, but it's apple and oranges. Roke making good use of the hook early on. Yeah, and trying to find that combination as well, guys. Anybody that can start finding that combination is a big deal. Use it. Uh, Using the Philly Shell defense here in boxing, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for MMA, but in this boxing round, it, looked, it looks fantastic. Well, and the, the, the question is, what are the judges counting as far as punches? A lot of those blunt punches are landing on the forearms, but what are they counting them as? Zalal's doing really nice work close in, almost like, uh, almost reminiscent of Muay Thai fighting. Little low blow. This is a low blow. He hit him, but he hit used to below the waist. He said, keep your punches up. It was real quick. Yusuf doesn't look uh, any worse for the wear, so to speak. Cup paid for itself right there. Yusuf uh, knows that left hook's coming a little bit, whether it's telegraphed or he's just expecting it. Rogue's doing a good job of uh, uh, utilizing his jab, though, which is coming from that, that boxing background. Combination, and then a short right by Zalal. Left hook. Combination for Zalal, but again, Rogue with that left hook that keeps the danger right there. Yeah. And Rogue is mixing that hook level-wise as well. He's going body and head with it. Zalal's doing a great job of using that Philly shell, the good uh, head movement, and then controlling this ring. I mean, it doesn't look like he has this is his pro boxing debut. No, he, he's doing a pretty good job. Oh, Rogue with oh, the big nice. left. Another thing Zalal's doing really well is uh, fighting off of the break. 45 seconds left this opening round. Nice quick uppercut by Zalal. Uh, it's anybody's first round right now. So let's take, see how they finish up. Combination there, left hand by Rogue. It's one of the unique uh, you know, aspects of boxing compared to MMA is uh, you know, the damage and, and what's landing and oh, what's not left. landing. Is, uh, is not as significant than when in four ounce gloves. A absolutely, that makes a big difference. And it also, you're wondering, on those shots, are the judges seeing everything that we're seeing on that? 10 seconds left in this round, round you hear the clacker. Nice jab, that jab's getting through by Zalal. Beautiful job by both fighters. That's a, that's a close round, boys. I agree with that, very close round. Be tough to score that one. I think Zalal, Zalal was doing a really good job of controlling the ring and uh, putting himself in the best position to land his combinations, where Rogue needs to do a better job of hitting angles and really taking that center back. Because Zalal has controlled where the fight has gone in the ring. That's a great point. I think uh, the other thing is uh, Rogue's showing a little bit of damage. Now, if you're in Rogue's corner, what would you tell him to change the momentum of this fight? Like you said, change the angle so that he's cutting off the ring a better, a little bit better. He's not the one being backed up. Make make sure that you're the one that's controlling where the where the fight is taking place. And the other thing I would say is that that left hook so well, but how about double it up, go left to the body, then come upstairs with that left. I think he's doing a good job of utilizing the jab. I just want to see a combination after it. Putting his punches together, absolutely. These guys ready to get right after it, start round two. They're all doing a good job of switching his stances, and uh, you know the jab's coming out at both sides. Oh, there's a good, nice stiff left jab. He's moving well. I mean, like you said, a lot of MMA guys don't move like boxers. Although you knock a lot of people out. With <laughs> oh, but it's a definitely a different story when you're in a boxing ring with boxing gloves. I mean, the range is different, the combinations are different, and the movement is the different. The feel is different, having those heavier gloves on. Right. But I mean, Zalal with the uppercut there. Again, he's controlling where this fight is going. And if you're a rogue, you maybe want that in the center. Yes. Oscar Bit. Martinez, referee, willing to let him. Oh, and another possible low blow. Yep. I was going to say referee, willing to let him fight in the clinch. Oh, nice left by Zalal, popped the chin back a little bit. And the ref definitely missed a low blow, it was on the other side of the, K of the ring. We can hear Mark Montoya in the corner as Law saying, own the range. Right. 
And Rogue's doing a good job with his jab, but because he's not following up with the jab, uh, Yusuf is able to capitalize off of that jab. Yeah, he's timing off it because there's no combination with it, Drew. No. Good movement, though. Nice solid left by Zalal. There's a couple punch combination. Zalal Ooh. doing a really nice job of moving his feet with Ooh. his punches. Nice. Making sure that as he closes that distance, he's bringing his body weight with him. And both fighters, give credit to both fighters. They're getting tied up, but there's still action. They don't have to break him off very much. Right. And, and Rogue, being the shorter fighter, I think he needs to do a better job of uh, taking that center of the, the ring and uh, really push uh, Yusuf backwards. Yeah, being up against the rope is doing him no favors at all. I think this has been a real good round for Zalal. Right. Got one minute left in this second round, King of Sparta tournament, the one and eight seed. Zalal has he found his range off of uh, his opponent's jab, and he's able to hit these combinations off that jab. Yeah, and I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing a little bit of lunging by Roke. He's kind of lunging and telegraphing his punches. Right. And I think it's just because he's not setting himself up like in position to hit his combinations. He's either too far out or too far in. Yeah, Zalal doing a really nice job of staying real centered over his stance, not leaning forward, not reaching. Using his length well, he's smart. Zalal setting up the center of the ring and that jab, and man, this combination is gonna come after the fact. Yeah, he went to watch his hands down a little bit. 10 second clacker has sounded. The lunge at the last minute bell that hit the right glove of Zalal. If it, you look at the gas tanks, both fighters look great. I mean, uh, training in Mexico is no easy task either. Right. <laughs> but I think Drew, you pointed out something very, that has kind of been a theme of these opening two rounds. JR, I don't hear what you have to say about it too, is that really he, he's letting Zalal control where this fight has gone. And I think if he, if he stays in the open, he's got a better shot at maybe following up with a combination. Right, right. And the, we're, we're seeing on the replay here exactly what you're talking about, Todd, the way that Zalal is controlling where the fight is taking place. Almost always throughout both rounds, Roke has had his back toward the ropes the whole time. I mean, you have no choice but to move backwards. And when you hit those ropes, I mean, you're just gonna be running forward into those punches. And Zalal's doing a good job of controlling that ring. And yeah. now, now seconds are out here, JR. And if you're in that corner, you could, could it be 1-1? One, one? Yeah, but you could be down 0-2. Yeah, I think you need to stress the urgency of this round to your fighter. Say, hey, you gotta go out there and try for a match. My personal opinion, I think all fighters should fight to finish. <laughs> well, Agreed. Coming from a guy that gets a lot of finishes. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of the reasons we love you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice left, sneaky left that popped his head back. Rogue's starting to take a little bit of damage. Rogue's coming out with a little bit more uh, ferocity, so I, I feel like he's he feels behind and he's trying to catch it up in this round. He's got to yeah. throw some combinations, not just that leaping left. Follow it up with something. Right. Some, some blood coming out of the nose of Roke. Well, they're allowing him to hit in the clinch. There's no doubt there. Zalal looks a little crisper with these shots. A little bit more fluid, and uh, his combinations are coming off of his range, and Roke just really hasn't been able to find his range after this jab. And, and I don't want to say that Roke looks tired, but Zalal just looks so fresh. Comparatively. Yeah, you see, he flared out, trying to feint that, that left to bring back the right, and it just didn't work. Still a minute 50 left in this fight. The Moroccan Devil looking to move into the semifinals. He's trying to win this King of Sparta tournament and get back to the UFC. Yeah, Zalal has just really good vision in there. He seems to be seeing a lot coming before it gets there. I think it's that fluidness of like, the Ooh. confidence of what works and what doesn't work. And when your combinations are working, you get less tired. That was a big hammer by Zalal. And follows it up again with the right hand. Rogue is just having a hard time finding Zalal in his switching of stances and, and his movement. And, and it's, it's very unlike most boxers. Give a lot of credit to head coach Mark Montoya for getting him ready. And <laughs> Zalal feeling a little, a little bit shake. in there. 
A little shimmy, as it were. Hey, still a minute left. And Roke definitely uh, easy to see the blood pouring forth. <laughs> Zalal firing with that left, finds the target again. I, mean, I can speak firsthand. When, when your opponent starts talking and shimmying and, and taunting, like, it gets very difficult when you're in there and exhausting at the same time. And you're bleeding. <laughs> Zalal's looking really comfortable. And you know what? It wasn't just outside and inside. He's looked comfortable both places. Right. Rogue is doing a good job, but once he's in the pocket and hit, hitting uh, you know, some punches, I think he needs to stay in the pocket for a little longer. Like, really just force himself in there and just cause the most damage up close. Jerry, you've talked about this before, and that's, that's the combinations, you know, following up after a punch. Exactly. You don't want to do one shot and then that range that you worked so hard to close, back yourself out of it. You need to continue that moving forward, which is what we've been saying all fight. We'd like to see more of from Rogue. Yeah, right there. I mean, Zlaw does a good job of uh, exiting those combinations, but if Rogue did a better job of just maintaining his distance, he could land more punches. All right, well, we're going to take it to the judges. And Is the first round four rounds? Th uh, I have three rounds on my yeah, card. Is this be, four? Should be three rounds. All right. uh, the cornermen are looking like they're uh, uh, getting, They ain't stopping working right now. Getting things ready for a fourth. I guess that would be in case it was a draw. They want him to be ready for a fourth. And checking out things on the replay here. And again, we see Roke backing himself out of his own punching range. And Zalal just managing that distance uh, pretty masterfully. Yeah, just being the shorter fighter, you got to know where you're going to cause the most damage. And uh, that, that distance, he wasn't doing his best work. And they're up off their stools now, meeting in the middle of the ring. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, we were, that, was, that was the end of the fight. And I think, Drew, when, you, when you're looking at getting hit, you can recover a little bit when you're running eight, 10 ounce, 12 ounce gloves like that. It's a whole different deal than a four ounce glove. Right, right. Uh, you definitely take a, a lot more risks with a larger glove because they're easier to see than the four ounces. There you go. Let's get it up for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after a three-round battle, we go to the Georgia scorecard. All three judges score this bout 30-27 in favor of your winner. And moving on in the King of Sparta, Yusef the Moroccan Devil, Zala! And we will be seeing Mr. Zalal up next in the ring when he's there for kickboxing. You go back and grab some carbs. <laughs> A little more familiar, and uh, listen, having the one seed is an advantage because you're going to be the one with the most rest. I don't know. I think Yusef pulls the, the toughest seed in this tournament. I mean, coming from like a, fighting a pro boxer in the boxing round, right. potentially a, a pro kickboxer in the kickboxing round, and then potentially one of the best wrestlers in the MMA rounds. I mean, uh, his path to the, uh, the, the championship is the hardest, and, uh, man, it's, it's impressive to see from Yusef. Well, and I guess if, uh, if you want to get in and back, that's the way to do it, but you're right. I mean, all these guys that have made this tournament, all eight of them were, were very, very good. Right, right. And now they just need to do a better job of, you know, cleaning themselves up, icing, and then recovering for the next fight. All right, let's take it up, Stewie. Get this next fight going. 